another population model. The nice thing about population models is they're not necessarily dictated by mechanics. So they can have weird terms that you're not going to get looking at a pendulum or something. So here's the example of it's rabbits versus sheep. And this will be a, uh, a model of competition that's due to Latka and Volterra model of competition between species. It's often called the predator prey model, but here we're not thinking of rabbits and sheep as predator and prey. They're just competing over the same food supply, which is grass, and the amount available of grass is limited. So we're going to ignore other complications like predators or seasonal effects. Uh, so I'll write this as X and Y, where X is the population of rabbits, Y is the population of sheep, and what do we get? Let's look at X dot and Y dot. I'll just write out a model and then explain it. So this is X, 3 minus X minus 2Y. And Y dot is Y, 2 minus Y minus X. If we were to write this out and try to explain it, we'll break it up this way. And I'll leave the other for now. If we were to just write x dot equals x 3 minus x, this looks like the logistic equation for some population x that has a carrying capacity of 3. And then down here, this is another logistic equation for a population y with a carrying capacity of 2. So what we're saying is that rabbits will um, have a higher carrying capacity, so there'll be more rabbits in the absence of any other effects than there are sheep. But now in this x plus dot dot dot, we'll put in an interaction between them. So this is minus 2x times y, and then for the sheep, it's minus xy. How do we explain these two terms? Think of these as interaction terms. When the rabbits and sheep interact, just think of them as sort of randomly moving around in a field, their limited field, you know, maybe, I don't know, a thousand acres or something. When they do interact, there's going to be uh, this negative sign means that there's gonna be an effect on the, on the, on, on the rabbits. The rabbits will tend to lose that encounter more than the sheep will. That's why there's a factor of two here compared to a factor of one down there. So think of this as an, an in interaction term. If you've taken a chemistry, you know that the interaction between two chemicals, they tend to say it's gonna be proportional to the density or the population of each. So here X times Y is you know, the population of each. And then the strength of the interaction is the number in front. So here, sheep are bigger, so sheep will tend to win the encounter. And so we'll just say that that's, that's the effect. Okay, hopefully that gives some idea. So given that, it's kind of contrived, and the numbers are chosen to be nice and reasonable. Like before, find all the fixed points for the system, and then classify them. And our goal is to is kind of the basic goal for looking at these two-dimensional ODEs. We want to construct the face portrait. So we're going to try to do it analytically, piecing kind of local pictures together and then combine them. And then we'll compare with a, a numerical simulation. Let's see where we could go in terms of obtaining fixed points and analyzing them. So the fixed points are obtained by solving X dot and Y dot equals zero simultaneously. And that's why I wrote it out this way, because then you could see, oh, well, if x equals zero and y equals zero, that's a fixed point. Zero, zero is a fixed point. And you can convince yourself of the others as well. That's zero and two, three, zero, and then one, one. So we've got four fixed points. So let's consider each of the four fixed points in turn. And how do we do that? We write the linearization matrix A or the Jacobian, so the general x, y, Jacobian. And then we could just plug in these numbers. You know, this is x star, y star equals all of these. A equals partial x dot partial x, partial x dot partial y, partial y dot partial x, partial y dot partial y. This will give us 3 minus 2x minus to y. Then over here, over y will be minus 2x. Partial y dot partial x will give us just minus y. And partial y dot partial y will give us 2 minus 
x minus 2y. So now let's look at each of these fixed points. Just plug in 0, 0, and you get 3 here, 0, 0, 2. So nothing off the diagonal. We can look at what tau is. Tau is 5, and what is delta? Delta is 6. We've got an unstable node. And if, if you remember the formula for getting the eigenvalues, you could get those from tau and delta. But since this is diagonal, we could just read off what the eigenvalues are. So this has eigenvalues lambda equals 3 and 2. So we've got two positive real eigenvalues. Since the eigenvalue 3 is in the first entry, that means the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 3 is, so we'll call that the first eigenvector if you want, v1 is 1, 0. The eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 2 is v2, 0, 1. So we've got that the fast direction is going to be the x-axis and the slower direction, but still fast, is that one. So if we were to plot locally, what do things look like? And remember, for this to be populations, we're only looking at the first quadrant of x and y. So in terms of x and y, our fixed point is there at the origin. We've got this direction, and this direction is v1, and this direction is v2. So nearby, things will be leaving kind of like that. We can't do the other side. So it's kind of locally what things will look like. And if you were to start on just the y-axis, you'll be going up. And could start on this x, x axis, you'd be moving away as well. So that's the local picture near 0, 0. What were the other fixed points? Let me sneak up here. We could look at 0, 2. A equals negative 1. If you just plug it into that thing, 0, negative 2, negative 2. Now we could just look at the eigenvalues. We don't need to do the trace stuff unless you really want to. But if you look at eigenvalues, you'll get lambda is negative 1 and negative 2. So that's a stable node. So we have an unstable node and a stable node so far. We could look at the trajectories approaching along the negative 1 direction. So the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals negative 1 is 1, negative 2. So if we were to plot x, y, and here is our point, 0, 2, then what do we get? That vector, how do we plot that? It's going, it's going to be like this. That's the vector v. But things are approaching along that direction. So if we were to plot trajectories, trajectories will be going and approaching along there. They'll also be approaching along other two directions. So that's kind of what the phase portrait looks like near there. There, That's a fixed point, so I should show arrows kind of going in to it. So trajectories approaching near the eigen direction of V. And the dynamics are still going to be uh, pointing towards it along the y-axis. Right, the y-axis is a it's an invariant set, meaning if you start on it, you stay on it. And for this to be a stable node, that means that's the other eigen direction. Okay, we'll look at the other point. Three zero. What's the Jacobian matrix? It's negative three, negative six, zero, negative one. So that means we have eigenvalues, right? We could just read off the eigenvalues because we have an upper triangular matrix. Just like this other one, we had a lower triangular matrix. So eigenvalues are, if we could just read them off, it's negative three and uh, negative one. And we could look at the corresponding directions. Trajectories will seem to be approaching along the slow eigen direction. And that would be the uh, eigen vector corresponding to lambda equals negative 1 in that direction is 3, negative 1. So our little sketch of what's going on, x, y. This is our point, 3, 0. Well, since both of these are eigenvalues are negative, we could already say this is a stable node. Again, the fast direction 
going to have to be along the x-axis. And so the slow direction is given by the eigendirection span of this vector v. Okay, so this is just the local picture. Later we'll put it all together. So dynamics will be coming in this way and then like that. We're piecing things together. We've got one more point that is one, one. That's the interesting one because it's off of the uh, x or y axes. So what about at one, one? A equals negative one, negative two, negative one, and negative one. So here it might be useful to calculate tau. Tau is negative two. And what is delta? Delta is negative one. Ooh. So now we've got, because delta is negative one, we're in the left half plane of that earlier diagram. So this means we've got a saddle point. That's kind of cool. And the eigenvalues, we could get that from tau and delta from that formula. It ends up being negative one plus or minus square root of two. So that means one of them is negative and the other one is positive. So maybe we'll even just put it that way. We've got, that's the positive one. And then here's the negative one. You could find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So there's our point, right? one, one. So we'll call this V2 and this is V1. The direction along which things are leaving is the V1 direction. And then the direction along which things are approaching is the V2. So think of those eigendirections. V2, I said, is where things are approaching. So we'll draw the arrow coming in. And V1 is where things are leaving. So the arrow's going out. So that's our local picture. Now we'll try to combine all of them to give us a good sense of the phase portrait. So now combine all the local phase portrait pictures. What do we get? This was three, zero. This is zero, two. This is zero, zero. We got x, we got y. Where's one, one? Be kind of like here. And now we'll kind of just sketch what the local pictures were everywhere. We had kind of things going off like that. We've got things coming in to this. We've got things going into O2. And then we got this weird saddle situation. We've got things coming in from one direction and then leaving on another direction. We could use kind of common sense to try to fill in what the rest of these things are. And noting that due to continuity, all of these pictures have to kind of smoothly merge one into the other. So how can all of this happen if we were to fill it all in? This is Y, this is X. This is the kind of picture that we'll get something like that. Here's that other fixed point. It's gonna be something going directly to that fixed point. And things will kind of be doing weird situations like this, like that. So that's what we would expect. Let me remind ourselves what this ODE was. Three minus X minus two Y. And then the other one was Y dot is Y two minus X minus Y. You might wonder, how did these special directions all combine? How does that happen? So it's x times 3 minus x minus 2 times y. And then the next one was y times 2 minus x minus y. And let's make it go from the minimum z, uh, x is 0, minimum y is 0, and then we'll go to just 4, 4. You see there's a lot of business going on down here in this part. So let me just sort of plot some trajectories. It looks, you know, it's looking qualitatively like we expected. There's a saddle point. There's two stable states. There's a state where sheep dominate and there's a state where the rabbits dominate, right? Remember what this was? X represented rabbits and then Y represented sheep. So there's actually a special trajectory. I'll do it in maroon here. This is called the stable manifold of the point one one. It's like the nonlinear version of the stable direction. We haven't really said much about that. And it's got two branches coming off of that saddle point, but it separates two regions 
the basin of attraction for rabbits win versus the basin of attraction where you'll do that in blue sheep win meaning everything here goes to that fixed point so this is the sheep win basin and this is the rabbits win basin so depending on if your initial condition is above or below that stable manifold that determines ultimately what the end state is here and that's um, we're out of time so i'm going to stop there and we'll continue with analyzing things in the phase plane more next time.